Probably they, they don't create any form of malice. That's how we start the stream now. It's me making weird sounds. I don't even know if I look like a pretty boy. Actually, unless I've changed face, I probably don't. Oh, morning. Give me a couple of a minute or so to enjoy this cup of tea, and then we will um, and then we'll start properly. Yeah. If you would like to ask a question during the stream or now, question in brackets, will hopefully allow me to put it out from the ether and answer it from out of my ass. No, hopefully there's something more than, <laughs> than I reckon. I get asked so much what type of tea I've got, I'm going to make it a bot command. Um, I have just some general black tea. It's, it's not Twinings, it's... Organic, fair trade, black tea. I can't remember where it's from. Sorry, you'll have my face in a minute after I finish slurping. Mm. Oh, Sarge, thank you so much for subscribing. Sarge has quickly become one of the biggest supporters of the channel. You are a legend, sir. I say quickly. Says you've subbed for, for eight months. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Delamars. We had this pre stream. The, the pre stream's great for subbing, apparently. Do a two hour pre stream before the stream stream starts. That a bit. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> How can you imagine? I mean, you can. It's, it would just be the screen with me talking random shit. Just like the same when my face is there. It's the anticipation, yeah. Got a little tiny bit of... Uh, I mean, it's, it's not black tea in the same way you have black coffee. It's uh, It's got a little bit of milk and sugar in it. It's it's, it's referred to as black tea still. <laughs> I think. Unless I'm really dumb. Which is, I suppose, not mutually exclusive. It's a good screen. Thanks. Thanks, Sarge. Appreciate it. Oh. The Zin... Zin's, oh, we'll talk about this in a minute. We'll talk about this in a minute. But Zin's a lot better. Like, she's working, working today. Well, sort of half working, giving her one video to do. Next week, though, I'm going to try and get her... I'm, I'm going to get her to work on the um, end of November stuff. Like, I'll get her working on the weekends for that. Um, that was sort of part of what she was supposed to be doing anyway. But uh, for the last couple of months, I've been pretty, pretty lenient on when she needs to work because there's not that much work to do until we're ready to do it. Tea without sugar or milk is required as clear tea. I don't know. I am British, but I'm not a tea connoisseur. I'm not sure if it would be on the citizenship test. Um. Well, we need to make a star citizen citizenship test. That's what we need to do. Some bullshit questions, probably my French. Right, let's let's make my face happen. Let's just do it. Oh, that that is not what I expected to see. That is some YouTube stats. Do you want to see some YouTube stats of my last stream? That was. Do you want to see that? You can if you want. Um, or a video. I don't even know what stats. What stats are these? There's some stats. I don't fucking know what's going on, on the screen. It. It. <laughs> It was it was a hard it was a hard day yesterday. I'll tell you why it was a hard day. So we were playing D and D in the evening, and doing really well. And I'm a extra cautious rogue, and I'm I'm really fair with the loot. I don't run around trying to like murder hobo everyone. 
Uh, I try to help the group. I try to get loot for the group. Um, they've made me effectively the group accountant. Um, and uh, we're around in this dungeon in uh, uh, into Avernus, whatever it's called, the prelude to um, Baldur's Gate 3, but as a D&D tabletop adventure. And uh, we're going around this dungeon, and we're level 2. It's really early on. Um, and uh, go into this room. There's a woman there. Loaded skeleton rats swarming around her. And we're like, oh, trouble. I get, like, the first action. So I, uh, I run up to her. Shoot her a couple of times with a crossbow bolt. And flank her. Run up to the next to her. I was like, don't want her doing any weird magic shiz, yeah? And um, everyone else runs into the room with me. Except for... <laughs> Except for the most useless character in the world we've got on our party, who is a um, a scholar. He's supposed to be a bard, but he's, he's just this old scholar that doesn't do anything. He's like chron chronicling us. Um, played by my mate Ian. He's, he's so annoying. He plays him perfectly. He's just so, he just plays him so well. Um, and um, go in there, and uh, then she teleports out and fireballs us and kills us all. <laughs> so kills us all. She knocks us all out, except for. Uh, this useless guy who's then in front of her uh, and his his action is to um, can I open my mouth and sort of gesture that she's allowed to walk past me in the hope that she won't attack that was his action um, but it, instead uh, she started to attack him and he made her go to sleep and uh, yeah he, he rescued us all basically uh, but it was <laughs> it's just oh oh D&D, &D. it's a really hard dungeon in D&D. &D. It's clearly supposed to be hard. It's got to be really, right? We're not just, maybe we're just bad. Thank you, JB Stones. Sorry, I started the stream by talking about D&D &D adventures. I'm sure a lot of people do not want to hear about that. Well, you're hearing about it. You're hearing about it. You've turned on to the board gamer and you can be bored as well now. Um, what maybe you're interested in D&D? In &D? It's good. It's good. Uh, it's good enough. A load of people I have... Uh, I've played some games with some of them before. Um, be interesting to see if um, lockdown changes the way we can do that. Um, we'd all remote if we had to. Uh, cyber D and D. Um, but yeah, so the, the world the landscape's changed for all of us. I think. I think there's a worry in some places that the world will go back into more lockdown. Um, Star Citizen Crown Imperium. They seem to be doing very well. Uh, from from the lockdown, it's obviously slowed this year by uh, a, I'd say a quarter, um, and the project by a quarter overall. I'd I'd say personally, uh, beyond the, any other normal days, normal days. Um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's uh, there. There are some odd um, efficiency benefits for what's happened with the world. Like, d don't don't get me wrong. I think it's fucking awful, uh, but. Like, when you go to a bar now, and I've been to, like, a bar once um, since uh, March. Oh, my God, I haven't been out. I went to a restaurant once and a, and a bar once. I went to a comedy gig on Wednesday, and uh, it was an all-female comedy gig. Yeah, and I have reservations, uh, worries about all-female comedy gigs in the fact that it might be extremely... Um, uh, Super, super feminist humor, super, super I don't know that's massively an issue. If it's funny, it's funny. I don't really care. Uh, but I don't want it just to be cringe about the same thing. Like, I, I, I don't want that every act to be pretty much modestly the same. Um, but it was uh, Callie Beaton was the headline act, and she was fucking fantastic. Um, she was very clever, very good with all the comedy. Uh, she, she's a very, very good comedian. Um, and she... Uh, she uh, she asked asked about bonobos and I was like, I know about bonobos. They're the sex monkeys. They like to joust each other and uh, talked for a little while. And she went, you know a lot about that, don't you? <laughs> and then started to pick on me regularly, which is uh, more interaction than I've had from women in several years. So that was uh, that was good. It was a really good laugh, a really good evening. Um, that was it. Was nice to get out of the house. And they were. You can tell that venues are seriously suffering and they're doing it they're doing a lot so well yeah the thing i was saying that some things are benefited from it or at least efficiency benefits so you see pubs now and clubs or whatever well pubs i don't know if clubs are open but pubs qr code everything so you don't go to the bar anymore you just go beep beep put your order in on your phone 
and your stuff turns up at the table. It's, that's just great. That is amazing. That I want the minimum amount of interaction with people at a restaurant, unless it's someone that's telling me about the specials and what's on the menu, or the sommelier talking to me about wine. Now that, that can, you can define how middle class I am from that statement. Um, but you need a good sommelier in a restaurant, in my opinion. <laughs> Um, but yeah, sorry, that was, maybe we'd start the streams with, uh, five minutes of me talking about my life and, uh, random bullcrap. Um, I think when Zin is involved in podcasts with me, you'll get some beautiful Zin stories. Um, so Zin stories, and I hope you're listening, Zin. Um, Zin stories are, uh, you feel like there's going to be a point or a moral to the story or something going on, but there's not. Uh, it's just something that happens in the day, and it could be like, you know, I was stapling some, uh, some sheets of paper together, and I realised I ran out of staples. Uh, it's not even I ordered more staples. It's not even... <laughs> I don't even know what documents... Maybe, maybe this just overly described what documents they were. They are there to do with this, uh, to do with... And, you, you, and then you just don't get any more information about anything. And you feel left and wanting and, and not sure why that conversation started. They are the best. Um, you'll, you'll get, you'll learn to love them. You'll learn to love them. Yeah. But it's, uh, Zin is a lot better now. So Zin w was suffering from coronavirus, um, as was her, uh, partner. Um, it's fine, fine for me because they live in like Milton Keynes area and um, London, near London. Uh, and I live far away from them. And the two of us need not meet, um, to, to do the work. It's all, all remotely done. So, uh, I'm still being pretty safe, uh, but... <laughs> So, they, they've been, it was, it was like bad flu for them, um, or flu, Basically, flu is relatively bad. Um, the, the problem that, uh, Scyther! Thank you very much for the host, I, I hope that's how you pronounce your, your name, Scyther UK. Um, DC, so uh, her partner, lost his taste. Um, and I'm not talking about like his fashion sense, although, I, I th if you could argue that he's had corona all his life. <laughs> um... No, you're a beautiful goth. You've got almost goth, um, DC. You're, you're beautiful boy. Um, but uh, yeah, he lost his sense of taste. And he still he says I'm going to back, and he's like most worried that he won't get that back. And I think uh, if you were to told people there is a genuine chance you will never get your sense of taste back after having Corona, people would not leave the house. I would never risk that, eh? Um, that that is, I'd rather risk my life than lose my taste. I think that's what it is. Um. Oh. Right. So, if you'd like to ask a question during the live stream, a uh, question in brackets will help me out a lot. Mm. Typically, my... Uh, thank you very much for lots of helpful people in the chat as well. You are very useful people. Yeah, typically my MAs are between one and two hours, uh, but it's sort of like how, how long ago. Uh, at the moment, I haven't been able to go... And for a long time, I haven't been able to go for more than two hours because I want to go check on my family and... Um, and my cats and lots of other stuff and I should move around because of my back and uh, a lot of stuff uh, When do you think we will have a PU in a state where there is enough content that you feel like there is enough to keep finding new stuff and to not get stuck doing the same thing over and over? That's going to be a while. That's going to be um, We need more star systems um, I, I actually think it's more likely to be about three or four years before you have that where you're not going to be like uh, this is uh, repetitive. Like, because you, you're going to need a lot of gameplay loops. You're going to need a lot of variants. And you're going to need uh, a lot of the permanent progression stuff to come in. Uh, and the game to be in a much more MMO state. There's actually quite a lot to do. Um, there's a, a lot of stuff they can get in the game now. Uh, and um, a lot of stuff that they, they're working towards. And lots of mechanics that will come online. But until they fit everything together with the dynamic universe simulation and uh, all the gameplay loops working together and reasons to do that, you're, you're not going to have a, a proper game experience until then. It, it's going to be more of a, a load of modules loosely fit together um, and more alpha testing. And the reason that Star Citizen is in, is in an alpha is because of that. Yes, you have some um, sort of loosely um, 
polished gameplay loops like mining. Mining's pretty pretty polished, and they're adding refining to that to polish it even more, and then they're going to be building that into the Dynamic Universe sim, and then you'll start to see more and more of that branch out, and you will have a bit more over the next couple of years, and there'll be a lot less repetitive, and there'll be a lot more to do. But I think, specifically to your question, um, finding stuff that you're not going to be doing the same thing over and over again, that's going to be a while out. Uh, what GPU do you suggest? Um, I suggest you wait a little tiny bit longer um, uh, before choosing what GPU you should get because the AMD 6900 XTs and 6800 XTs look genuinely great. Um, there might be a 3080 Ti or a 3080 um, uh, upgraded RAM edition uh, and there might be a bit of a, a jostle around in the pricing uh, of GPUs. So because it looks like AMD are just about to release a very competitive set of GPUs um, that could upset the market a bit and it might be that red is better um, or um, green have to be more competitive on price or they're about the same. Being about the same, um, or one being slightly better than the other and then them competing on price, that's a great position for us as consumers to be in. Uh, I wouldn't have solid loyalty for red or green. If Nvidia AMD, it doesn't matter. Just go for the one that suits your needs the best at the price point you want. Um, look at power draw, look at all that sort of stuff. We will be looking at probably the 3800 and the 6900 XT on my channel. Um, if uh, hardware manufacturers um, decide to chuck me uh, graphics cards, great. I'll look at more. Um, but I'll, I'll typically be buying them myself. Um, so yeah, it, it, basically what I'm saying with the GPU stuff... Wait a few more uh, days to see exactly what the third-party reviews say about the uh, 69, uh, 6800 and 6900 um, for, for the AMD um, and how they compare to the 3080, how they compare to the 3090, and um, see if there's more of an inkling whether we're going to get a 3080 Ti. Because the 3080 Ti, if, it, if they release one, it might be in a very competitive price spot to compete with the 3900 XT. Um, See what I mean? Sorry if I've just chucked a load of numbers and things at you that people are like, what What are you talking about? Talking about GPUs, the new GPUs that have come out from NVIDIA, um, which are very poorly stocked at the moment, so lots of people are still waiting on um, trying to get 3080s. I'm in position 226 in a queue to get a uh, 3080 Eagle. I, I ordered uh, within, uh, well, as soon as I was able to uh, on the, the first day of pre-order. And um, unfortunately... I did not uh, get particularly high up on a queue. Uh, I've moved, well, I think I started at three, uh, to two, four, two, um, uh, and no, three, four, two. I've not moved too much in the queue is what I'm trying to say, poorly. Mm. One of the things you'll see, um, hopefully next month is uh, two Star Citizen rigs built, one for me and one for Zin, uh, and we'll um, catalog that on the channel somehow because I want uh, the, the one that's going to be used by me I want to be a easily repeatable um, good price point Star Citizen PC and general gaming PC for the next sort of couple of years um, and I say good price point it's not going to be the most expensive everything it's going to be what is sensible what is a good idea to run games at 4k um, in, in the modern era that, that's what I sort of want um, Good thing that um, Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed again. So they delayed it by an additional 21 days. And I posted I posted on their Twitter, take as long as you want, get your game done. I, I'm not going to criticise anyone delaying their games, uh, except for occasionally maybe Star Citizen, um, very lightly. But I like, we know now, we know they're going to take as long as they want to take. Um, uh, what I don't want from CIG is, what, as soon as they have the new roadmaps out, I don't want them to be last second changes no oh, no we're uh, we we knew we know that we planned uh, salvage for two weeks time but we we're removing it from the roadmap until we uh until we decide it's going to come back and that could be two years do you know do you know what i mean so as long as they're more accurate with that and a, a lot more um uh, on the ball with any updates uh, i think i'll be happy happier with uh plan and pyramid with those delays but um so bunk yeah take an extra 21 days get your game polished 21 days it's three weeks come on it's all good. Um, and people that were very angry about that, it's like, well, I can I can imagine people, and you're allowed to criticise them, you're allowed to be angry about it, I suppose, um, but I can understand it, um, that, that, that they want an extra 21 days. I, I think people are the most angry if they, um, 
if you were taking days off work or, or arranged your life around it. Happy Halloween, Astro Mabbers. Thank you very much uh, for the donation. Very much appreciated, sir. You are a star. Uh, and and uh, did I say JB Stones? Did I thank you? I'm not sure if I did, sir. But thank you very much uh, for subbing. Very much appreciated. Um. Mm. Right. Yeah, I think a lot of us are, are, are waiting on iCash. It looks like they're trying to push iCash for um, end of first half 2020. Um, 2021? 2020? 2021. Um, that's the, the current uh, guesstimate plans. Are you going to do the Star Citizen build on uh, Twitch or YouTube? It won't be live. It'll be, there'll be YouTube videos. Um, though we might talk about it uh, eventually on, on live stream. Um. Mm. Is it people? I love the fact that regulars know that I'm making tea at the beginning of my streams. That is, that's lovely. Steambug Devil, good to have you here, sir. DJ Brown, love your face. Sarge, you're a good chap, but love your face as well. Binary Cheese, oh, you got a how long, how long does that mean you've been a, a member of me? They've got a little avocado board game of face. I, think, I forgot that that was a, a face that you could get. Uh, what have we got? What have we got here? So I, I will want to talk about a few things in a bit, like about the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, about um, the teaser picture, about some of the rumours we've had. Um, Crazy Caterpillar, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated, sir. Um... Is there a ship that you have your eye on you want to purchase for the upcoming sale? Um, I've only got... I'm not sure how many Mercury Star Runners I've got. Uh, but I'll probably buy some more Mercury Star Runners because I think they're the great giveaway ships. Um, they're not super expensive and, and people are hype about them. Um, so they help um, give something back to the community while not breaking the bank. Um, and they help expand the channel. Um, I... Uh, probably grab uh, a Nomad if it is a mobile refinery ship or uh, any form of uh, base building or industrial ship I'd grab. Um, would I grab uh, an RSI gunboat? I don't know. I've got a Javelin. But something like a Polaris might be a good idea as well for content i've got a carrick as well though i find it hard to justify buying any more ships and they can get them all in stream anyway well i appreciate all the love thank you very much i i, I find it um terribly depressing for your life if i'm the highlight of your week but i'm <laughs> but thank you i appreciate it um yeah, I'm interested in whatever the new sh new ships are. Um, I'd probably grab some Mercury Star Runners for, for giveaways. Um, I kind of want a Kraken, but I just think they're too expensive. I'll get it in game. I'll get it in game. I've got a Javelin. Uh, CIG will not be releasing iCash anytime soon. It's not expected in possibly th uh, Q3 uh, 2021. Yeah, I think Q Q2, Q3. 2021 seems realistic. Um, I'm I'm obviously slightly optimistic with dates because when I look at Star Citizen and stuff, I look at their their goals, which are um, optimistic goals typically. Uh, we'll know a lot more when we have the the updated roadmap. I think. What do you think about the new ship UI? Personally, I think they've outdone themselves. It looks fantastic. So this is, um, let's actually show this. Uh, so let's bring this up on screen. Oh. So this is the sort of updated UI. That's, that's a gentleman. I don't worry about him. So this looks really good. This actually isn't the full UI, though. I think that's very pretty. Um, so John Crew. No, I don't want your face, John Crew. Bad John Crew. Ah, so this... Let's go, let's go here. So... The 
the top of the screen, we've got a load of sort of like events or notifications, um, which will be really helpful for at a glance you're going, I, there's a missile coming or uh, what, my power plant's out or one of my uh, engines is out. And it'll sort of like give you a list of what's going on. Uh, but also on this, you can see um, what direction you're moving in. You've got all your um, sort of like countermeasures. You've got all your ship modes. You've got your thrusters and what they're doing and your, your velocity and everything. You've got a compass. You've got uh, what's going on with your signatures on your ship. There's just a huge amount of information conveyed and it looks fantastic. Look how good that sort of like the, the layers are for that. And uh, it's just a, it's sort of what I'd expect to see in a modern fighter. Um, I know and they could argue, well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be like a modern fighter. It should be much more advanced than that. Well, I mean, should it? If we, if they knew how to make it more advanced than that, then modern fighters or the postmodern fighters, or whatever you want to call them, um, would be like that already. If it's just a, a, a design layout, you think it's too busy, Talamars? I think it's got, um, I think it's got everything I want going on. I, I think it's using. So for me, it's using the screen real estate very well. There's a huge amount going on, but it's not obstructing my view. Um, I really like it. I genuinely really like it. I think it's very well thought out. It's got an altimeter as well, which is telling you um, where you are compared to the actual ground. So if you've got to lie over a mountain, it will change. Um, so I, I find that much more useful. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. I, th I think it shows you what you need to do, what you need to look at without blocking that. Um, and you're gonna, this, this is the Aegis one, so that obviously for Squadron 42's needs, they want it for um, like the Gladius and other Aegis ships. Um, but each manufacturer is going to have their own um, slightly differently themed one. Um, could we have cus more custom HUDs in the future? Maybe. Um, so the compass is relative to the planet or moon you're on. Or, if you're out of atmosphere, then the whole galactic plane. Um, which is interesting. Uh, but... It's at least a step towards shared coordinates and navigation, which I think we all wanted, right? Expected to get a bit more love and change everything, but it's also it was also the MFDs. Uh, so the MFDs, uh, they come online here. No, they don't. Ah, oh, there we go. But the MFDs, I think, look fantastic as well. They got all the different. Um, Did I skip past it? No, it'll come up in a second. There we go. So these MFDs. I love the way they look. With the little flickering light as well. Because the Guardian is supposed to be an older ship. Too, so it sort of makes sense. Yeah, I was I was really happy with that. Um, boop. 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 Uh, but Star Citizen makes stuff very pretty. Um... It looks to me like that is pushing towards the genuine final versions um, of everything. People have sent people send me money. Oh, Death Fruit. You've never sent me money before. Unless you've been through a different night. You saucy manimal. Keep on keeping on. And I will also be getting a 5950X. That is the, the plan here. As well. Oh, that's what the current donation goal is for. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so very excited about the 5950X. Uh, because it is genuinely a super powerful... A processor which is very suitable for games and workstation environments and i do both um yeah well thank you very much very much appreciated i hope your name is def fruit def fraud def de fruit def fraud def fraud de thanks thanks for ridiculous amount of money very much appreciated sir oh you legend i need to make sure i thank everyone properly in the uh, beginning of the month sort of like uh, channel update videos. Also what I want to get on the PC I am building is everyone's name that's helped donate towards that PC. We'll see how viable that is. <laughs> I'd like to get it laser engraved or something because then, you know, there's something there that I can occasionally see and you go, I gave a man money. So you could buy a PC and then salute yourself. 
<laughs> thank you. Genuinely, thank you, though. Um, uh, do you think that the uh, F8 or F7A will actually be flyable? I think it is very possible that they could be flyable this Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. It, it's possible. We don't know for certain. There are hints that it might be. Um, I think it would be very cool if they are. Because uh, it would just be for a day. And people would be like, ah! <laughs> for a day, it would be great. Yeah? It's going to drive more interest in them. Mimosa! Thank you very much for donating a load of, uh, a load of subs to people. Uh, Eagle Nur, Friedolf, and Jag, you all got you all got free subs, and that means you get to use my emotes and watch me and feel warm and fuzzy inside. Thanks. Oh, you start. Thank you very much, sir. Um, will Man United beat Arsenal this weekend? Yeah, a free one. Yeah, guaranteed. Guaranteed, mate. Uh. Is mint the new expo colour? Uh, so, um, these are the new expo colours, probably. So, we've, we've had some bits for the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo out now. So, um, there's a the Star Citizen page for it. So, you can go here and it will be updated. Um, it's just um, robertspaceindustries.com uh, slash IAE2950. Bam. Um, and it starts on the 20th of November, goes on to the 3rd of December. Um, and I believe it's this sort of a mustard yellow is the way I describe it. Uh, black and white. I think that is the colours of the Intergalactic Area Space Expo. And on my way here, we'll talk about this. So, talked about some of the stuff that Star Citizen Leaks have been talking about. And we know that Cloud Imperium have been working on some ships for the Intergalactic Area Space Expo. And typically we'll have a concept ship or straight flyable ship or, or both or vehicles and stuff like that going on, uh, on. And we've got these little pictures, which I suspect, I think we all can suspect, are new ships and vehicles. Now, uh, the ones that we've talked about recently are the Nomad, which I think is this central picture, um, which potentially is a mobile refinery ship, although it could be other stuff, um, but I think it's probably a mobile refinery ship. Uh, and you also have um, the RSI gunship that used to be known as the Odin, um, or at least was leaked as the Odin. Uh, and I think that might be the uh, left and right uh, pictures. Um, well, every time I look at this, it looks, look, looks like more like a um, F8 for some reason to me, but it's not. Um, but yeah, so... That that gunship would sort of like be hammerhead to Polaris-sized, somewhere in between there, um, if, if it's uh, the rumours are to be believed. And I'm very, very excited for that sort of stuff. I, I like new ships. I actually get a bit uh, upset that CIG are um, not putting out so many concepts and and, and flyable ships um, over the last couple of years. And I, a lot of people were like, no, 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 no. We want we want more game. Yeah, they're not mutually exclusive. I get quite excited by ships. Um, and I think they should have a dedicated team making uh, at least four new ships a year. That's what I'd actually like to see. Um you have a huge amount of variety by the end of it. But I suppose they're going to have loads of modularity and, and uh, uh, stuff like that in the future anyway. So it doesn't, we don't need loads and loads and loads of ships. Um, maybe. But uh, you can certainly disagree with me. You're still waiting on your Crucible, Der Frude. Um, I think the Crucible is going to be cool. But uh, what else do we have? Save the date. Uh Yeah, thir 13 days, November 20th to, well, it says to December 2nd, but I think it's December 3rd, it actually finishes. Um, uh, we've got a, later on today, we've got a Calling All Devs, which we'll uh, probably chuck up on the weekend, a uh, summary of it, uh, that will be looking at Death of a Spaceman. Uh, so we might see some medical mecha mechanic stuff in there. We might see some insurance stuff in there. We'll see stuff about mortality of your character and how they plan that to work in the future. Uh, I think that's a, a really good thing for Plan Imperium to touch on and talk about. So, I think, yeah, I think we've we've been worried about what insurance means. I think we've been worried about um, what death means in the game because it's not going to be a hard death. It's not going to be that you're dead, GG. Um, you can die loads of times 
and then you can keep on getting revived. Maybe you'll be able to get medical insurance. Maybe you'll be able to get a, 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 your lives back or whatever. But after a certain amount of deaths, you will permanently die, and your assets, so all your stuff, will move on to a, another character, which you'll create. Um, so uh, there might be some loss there, maybe some form of death tax, maybe some sort of reputation loss. The idea is, is it's not like, oh my god, GG, oh, oh what am I going to do? This is the worst thing ever. This is a, a mechanic to help you... Um, value risk and reward and to not want your tomb to die you're gonna not you're gonna want to surrender you're gonna want to um you're gonna want to do things in a way that means your dude does not um die so much yeah so board what are your thoughts on star citizen at the moment how are you feeling about it what are you excited about any issues well there's the, the development of star citizen is incredibly slow yeah and if I was playing Star Citizen exclusively every day, uh, I'd probably um, facepalm my, my, myself into the table so hard that my table would snap in half. Okay? So, uh, I play loads of games. Uh, I enjoy Star Citizen as a tourist. I enjoy covering it. I love it as a project. I mean, I'm in love with it. I'm in love with the community. I'm in love with the devs. I'm in love with what they're trying to do on paper. I used to play a load of EVE and Free Space 2 and loads of that sort of stuff um, uh, when I was a bit younger. So... Especially Eve, like I fucking love Eve, pun my French. Um, so, uh, yeah, as a project, it's great. At the moment, there's not a huge amount of gameplay, uh, and the gameplay that's there will get repetitive very quickly, as we talked about earlier. Um, but uh, what they're trying to do and what they're working towards is great, and I really enjoy getting involved with that and covering that as, as, as a project and as, as a content creator. So, um, and, and every major patch is pretty exciting. It's like I. Uh, I'm a kid in the candy store, and for a good um, couple of dozen hours at least, I'll be like, oh, new things, all oh, new things, all oh, pretty, all oh, pretty, and then I'll have some, um, after I've done all that, I'll be like, mm, what should I do? And I'll have some ideas, and I'll have to make some effort to get some gameplay, and then I realise I can join in some other people's guilds, sorry, orgs, um, uh, and get involved with their um, org events um, to expand out the gameplay a bit more. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so... The, the main issue with Star Citizen is its slow development and occasional erratically poor communication from Cloud Imperium when it comes to what they're working on and why, um, and they're sort of like changing priorities. So I think um, it would be hard to disagree that Cloud Imperium are a bit flaky when it comes to um, transparency of what they're currently working on and why, and why things change, um, and they don't update us as quickly as they could. However, that does look to be changing significantly in the near future with some new roadmaps and the way that Cloud Imperium are working at the moment, they, they do appear to have be having a load, load of devs um, actively going out on the forums answering questions, especially like people like Chad McKinney. Um, but the, the Cloud Imperium are doing AMAs regularly on their forums. They're um, getting a good amount of video content out, although um, I would like them to um, stop having a three-week break um, uh, every quarter. For, for Inside Star Citizen, or at least to replace it with another show in, 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 when that's down. Um, I'd like to see Calling All Devs more often. Um, they, are, they are sort of getting into a position where they're going to start giving us a load more information with those roadmaps and with the Squadron 42 information as well. But um, if you want a fully ready playable game now, unless you're jumping in with a org that you know you're going to have great fun with, uh, or a group of friends, then Star Citizen is not for you yet. It is not a sit down and play game, it is an alpha with all of the problems an alpha brings. So bear that in mind. Um, but uh, I'm, I am certainly excited about it. Uh, and uh, I'm a little bit... Um, so I like the drama as well. And I, I'm sorry to say that. I, I'm at least interested in the drama. There is a polarization in the Star Citizen community, which is odd. There literally are people that are Star Citizen just detractors that hate the game no matter what. It's like a genuine Star Citizen derangement syndrome, which is weird. Uh, there are some people that are obviously counter to that. The people referred to them as white knights, so they they exist in very small quantities compared. There are definitely people that argue different points and have different points of view on Reddit uh, and forums and stuff, and I wouldn't describe them necessarily as detractors um, or white knights either. They just have a different opinion to other people, and you get a lot of that. Uh, but overall, the Star Citizen community is one of the... It is the most welcoming, fun community I've been part of. Like, people are genuinely helpful. And you get threads on Reddit and people on Reddit and stuff that are CUNTs, yeah? Definitely. Um, you get that everywhere.
it's, it's the world we live in. Uh, but you get a lot of great people there as well. Especially in orgs. Like, I, I find if you want that Star Citizen community to talk to uh, regularly, joining a medium to large orgs is a good idea. Um, join the right, right one for you. Uh, any inkling of Kraken progress? I suspect we will hear more over the next um, uh, quarter on the Kraken. Um, uh, when for Taurus, uh, any info? No real info. We know that Cloud Imperium have been working on the Taurus. We know that they've been working on the uh, Constellation um, Parasite docking uh, over the last um, good few months. Um, and it, it's possible that it'll be in for Q4 2020 um, or Q1 2021 sort of the time. Um, so, Board, what are your thoughts on Star Citizen? Uh, that's what we literally just talked about for, for a long period of time. I'm quite far behind in the chat with questions, so please bear that in mind. Um, how much of a performance upgrade is going up from 16 gigs of RAM to 32 gigs of RAM? Okay, so I run 64 gigs of RAM, and I've noticed lots of improvements in memory-wise from going up from 32 to 64 but you've got to remember I have like a hundred Chrome tabs open and I'm running loads of stuff at once while playing a game um, and stream and, and do lots of stuff. So uh, workstation wise, that's really suited for my needs. 32 gigs of RAM is a great upgrade over 16 gigs of RAM. Thank you very much, Bearded Miner. I will. I will remain a beautiful potato for you. Thank you so much. Are you the star? Thank you. Um, lots of generous people today. You mad, you mad pipples. Um, so, I think it's, I, I think you're moving towards a situation where the norm is getting closer, or the preferred amount is 32 gigs. Yeah, it's sort of the sweet spot in my opinion. Um, it's just really useful. It just allows you to do a lot more. Um, some people aren't going to be using 30 gigs around. They, they might be uh, uh, around 16, and maybe 16 is better for you, but I just think 30 gigs is, is great. But you also need to consider um, the speed of that RAM as well. So don't just go for 3200 super cheap, um, 32 gigs RAM. Um, look at um, getting like 4000. It, dep it depends if you're going for AMD as well. Uh, AMD Ryzen's, um, they really leverage higher speed RAM. Um, Hey, boy, looking good. Thank you. Appreciate it. I've been, um, I've been eating a bit more. Um, probably quite bad on my diet, but I've been exercising uh, about twice the amount I normally do a day, doing sit-ups, push-ups, uh, and going for a, about an hour run. Um, have you slept? I I'm always going to look tired because I suffer from anxiety disorder and I don't sleep very well. Uh, and uh, during the days, uh, I sort of tire myself out by worrying about random things. This can be about... Um, uh, it'd be a lot, of, a lot of different stuff. Money not coming out of my bank account when I think, oh, God, have I paid Zin's pension? I was like, I was, I was like, yeah, I've got it. It says it's paid, but it hasn't come out of my bank. What does that mean? What does it mean? Um, so I'd like, worry about that for like an hour. Um, and then uh, I worry about uh, purchasing some dice for an hour. I'm like, what? Why, why are you worrying about purchasing dice? I want to make sure I get the right dice. I'm spending like £100 on some dice. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But I want some really nice dice because I don't buy much. I like what you bored. What do you buy? I buy Haskaha t shirts because I like his screenshots. Because Haskaha, uh, I use his screenshots pretty much all the time for my videos. What else do I buy? Uh, a green screen, but that's that's business related. Uh, models, I buy occasional 140,000 models uh, uh, that are slowly building up in my room. Um, but I don't buy much. Food, I buy mu spend money on food for myself. Um, everything else is just business. So I wanted some dice, because I play D&D. Have uh, you tried weighted blankets for night? Yes, I've got a weighted blanket. I'm going to buy a electric heated blanket, although I don't actually like heat very much. It is getting closer to winter, uh, and I don't like very thick duvets. Um, so maybe I just get a thick... I don't know. But I've got a, I've got a weighted blanket. I use it sometimes. I've also got a leg rest, which um, elevates my legs, which helps occasionally. Any news on the Emperor elections? We will find out who won on the 1st of November, apparently.
Uh, would love to see a deep dive on how you plan to upload a YouTube vid and all the related process. Oh, how are we doing? Uh, yeah, me and Zen can do something like that. Uh, for sure. Um, track an hour away. Thank you very much for the sub. Very much appreciated. Oh, you star. Thank you, thank you. Use a heated mattress pad. Uh, never liked it during the night. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want it on during the night just when I get into bed. Uh, has there been any updates and progress on Orison? Uh, so not since they last talked about it a little while ago. Um, we're still expecting it as a split race over Q1, Q2, 2021, uh, Orison and Crusader. Yeah, I think a lot of people actually thought they had until the 30th to vote in the election. Because the obviously the winner is going to be announced on the 1st. Um... Ever played Traveller? No. I haven't played much D&D &D or much in the way of tabletop RPG. I've done a reasonable amount of LARP um, many years ago. I've done some um, stuff. I, I'm more board gamey. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm pretty chill. I play pretty much anything. I like social games. Like a lot. Um, in fact, a uh, board game was originally going to do a lot of board games. And probably might still in the future. Like, I genuinely love them. Uh, as your only ship, would you prefer an Ares Inferno or an Aegis Sabre? Ooh, I love them both. I'm in love with the Ares Inferno, the idea of it more, but I use the Sabre a load. Um, I think the Sabre might have more use. Um, I need them. I, I, I need the Ares in my hand. To, I, I need to be able to actually test it. Uh, what is something you think we might see next year that no one currently expects? Well, if no one expects, then me saying it will confuse the whole situation, won't it? Have they said anything about missions where you have to collect samples? Uh, I don't know. It would be cool. There, there's going to be science missions, and there's going to be uh, missions where you collect stuff on planets and hunt animals and all that sort of stuff in the future. Um, expect every sort of basic uh, trope to be covered. <laughs> um, any updates on the Star Runner? Um, expect it between now and the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo starting on the 20th. Uh, do we have an idea of when NPC crews will arrive? No, we do not. Um, they are working towards um, NPCs uh, as wingmen and as part of missions. They're working towards... Um, Computer blades, which are semi-automated um, software or modules you put in your ship that can control turrets. Uh, and then after those, uh, expect to start to see NPC crew. Um. Uh, loving the new HUD look. Not wait to see it in game. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, some people are saying it's a bit too messy or cluttered. Um, I think it's um, using the screen real estate appropriately and has a huge amount of the information that I need at a glance. Um, anyone know when the November Expo starts? 20th. Uh, Board, what's your favourite manufacturer? It changes, but I have no loyalty to one particular manufacturer, I've realised. On paper, it's Drake. Um, in practice of the ships I've got, it's Aegis. Um, the combat ships, anyway. Uh, do you think the Kraken will be a worthy industrial support ship? Yeah. Your industrial ships can come there to rearm, repair, and refuel, and potentially sell their, their things there. Yeah? What's the difference between static server meshing and dynamic? So stat static server meshing is the first stage of server meshing that we're going to get. Uh, it will uh, basically have set areas as servers. So, in the Stanton system, you might have 12 servers, um, one for each of the planets, one for each sort of area of space, um, maybe one for each moon, things like that, yeah? And just automatic, that, that is there, they're static servers that you move between seamlessly. Dynamic server meshing has one server, the Stanton, and then, and then, 
every object container, but this is basic, basically anyway, every object container, be it a ship, be it an area of space, be it a planet, can become a server um, based on player population. It could be a room, it could be a planet, and they're all nested in each other. So you can have um, someone in uh, near an outpost, and each of the uh, you know, each of the rooms in this outpost um, are their own server, and the outpost outside is its own server, and the planet it's on is its own server. Um, so if you could sit, so they, they, they each have a certain amount of people in, and they move seamlessly between them. Um, so dynamic server meshing allows for more, basically. And the idea of how how is this different from the way other things work? It's seamless. It's seamless. A ship can be a server, but also is interacting with another server, and then combat can occur between multiple servers, effectively, because you have two interests fighting and with a full complement of people. Maybe they could also each be their own server. Do you see what I mean? The weird thing to sort of... Say, oh, okay. Uh, what D&D character do you play? Uh, so I'm a hu human variant uh, rogue. Uh, and I uh, am crossbow -y. I've got uh, hand crossbow and crossbow expert. So there's pop loads of crossbow bolts at things. Uh, but I am a, uh, a true neutral. Um, I, I don't like the random murder of people. Um, unless they deserve it, basically. Uh, and I want friends. Uh, so I, I, I steal for the group. I uh, act towards the group interest. I, um, I, I've got some, some pretty bad points that... I require a plan to operate, or if I don't like people's ideas, I operate to defend them. Um, so what I mean by that is, like, if I see someone doing something stupid, I will set off the trap um, before they're fully in it, even if it could um, technically damage them a little bit rather than a lot. And I just sort of operate like that. Like, um, the, 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 when we were playing yesterday, there was a, a, a suit of armour... And someone did detect magic magic on it. There's like the it's like an evil suit of armor um, in the the for Baal or something. A uh, god of murder, I think. No, that's that's a bit Baal is because of murder. It was Baal or, or something like that. Um, and um, they're like, oh, that there's you detect faint mag magic on the gloves. He was like, oh, the gloves have got conjuration magic on. I was like. The, the dwarf, one of our guys walks up to go, I'm going to try and put the gloves on. So I immediately crossbow bolt the gloves. Go, Evil gloves! And they come to life and attack us. And, they, and then my mate went, they were probably just gloves of self-defense that you activated. It's like, <laughs> why are you trying to wear them? Oh, sorry. I, I, I enjoy social games. I love I love D&D. Um, I did probably do D&D on the channel uh, at some point, maybe. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the other manufacturer ship huds, for sure. <laughs> With a virtual power management, has there been any info on the item system 2.0 uh, and its component-driven glory? So, um, the new resource system, um, and the sort of like, fuel converts, goes to the power plant, converts into power, and then power goes to all the ship's uh, systems, and a uh, battery, which also goes to all the ship systems, um, and then, well, I say all the ship systems, the ship systems it's connected to, and then relays also connect things around as well, which um, they can all be disrupted individually and can all be repaired individually, which is really interesting. So the physicalized component system is very much directly connected to the resource system, and they are being wor uh, worked on in tandem, I believe. Um, so um, something's going to take a while to get in fully, uh, but you might start to see more and more and more of it. Oh, thank you very much for the money! Sweet Skarma! I love watching you content your your to, to content so much information sorry i had to uh good luck on getting the upgrade i love star citizen but haven't been able to play as i need a new pc uh, also do you think the banner matchman will be for sale yes the banner matchman will be for sale i will say that with a 99 percent probability um almost every ship should be on sale that's previously been on sale some ships will be on sale in limited quantities I don't think the Banning Merchantman will be limited quantity. I think it'll just be on sale. Um, and it'll be on sale on its Banning Merchantman day. And maybe it will... Uh, on the Banning day. Um, but maybe it will also be on sale at the end of this period as well. Um, probably. Probably will we. Eight years for four planets and dozens of game-breaking bugs. Only 49 more systems to go. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so Star Citizen is an alpha. If you go, ha ha, it's an excuse. That's not an excuse. That is what it is. It's not a game yet. You correctly identify that it's not a game yet. Star Citizen is a deck demo. Uh, Star Citizen is an alpha game. It's just, you know, it's going to take a long time before it's a sit down and play game. Uh, and yeah, you're basically testing stuff. It, it's more than a tech demo. Um, uh, it's it's something they are iteratively building on. Uh, what's the difference between... I talked about that already. Do, 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 do. Uh, what else have we got? Should we star citizens lobby to keep our account items we purchased at the expos? Yeah, so I'd like to see um, those items that you purchase unlocked on your account permanently uh, at expos, the sort of like expo gear. Um, and t-shirts and stuff. Or drawing the expos away like they had with the October events. Uh, a way to get those items um, as an unlock. Yeah? So you do. You go to the expo every day. You get an expo hat. Yeah. Th there's going to be f lots of free stuff I would expect. Like, like a, a digital goodies pack. Um, potentially. Or at least the, the carrot helmet. Um, going to be given to everyone for the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo as well. So sort of bear that in mind. But I totally agree with you. There should be ways of um, keeping the stuff permanently that you get from the Intergalactic Aerospace Expos, the, the, the um, flare. Yeah, uh, people that were getting really upset about um, the 21-day delay on Cyberpunk, I just think it's a bit weird. Like, delays happen. I, I, think, I think actually what it was that it was a little bit sort of like the irony of Cyberpunk. The day before they announced the 21 del day delay, someone basically said, can you please confirm that there's not going to be a delay and no taxi backsies? And they said, confirm no delay, basic basically. Um, and then the next day they just went, there's a delay. Um, and it's just fair enough. It's only 21 days and they, they, they want to get stuff done. And yeah, take your time is what I'd say. Um, but, uh, try not to confuse As your only ship, uh, we talked about that as well. Do you ha do we have much information on the quest lines and stories that will exist in the persistent universe? I feel like most talk is about gameplay loops, mechanically how they work, but not quests. Um, so missions and stuff. There's going to be a huge amount going on. There are going to be um, quest lines um, and stuff that gives you a deeper understanding of the lore of the area and what's going on. Um, there's, the mission givers are going to be part of that. The sort of like more um, theme park ride missions and the more sort of like uh, missions that most people when they go to a new star system and um, when they get involved with particular groups they might um, commonly do like there'll be like a load of stuff that is very similar um, that everyone does and that'll give them a huge understanding of the, the, the what's going on in the area what there is to do um, and all that sort of stuff um, and that will be coming in the, in, in the future um, but that's something that's coming probably quite a bit later because um, they want to get this like modular mission system done and they're going to want to have uh, a lot more of the um, game fleshed out and then they're going to finish stuff off with that. I mean, you might see like, um, you get, get more and more mission giver missions and individual mission giver missions and you'll see like quest lines like the Arlington gang mission with the that's going to end eventually with fighting an Idris. You'll see Tessa Bannister come back. Um, but you'll see stuff that, um, you'll see lots more of that in lots of more areas. Uh, do you know how it worked last year? Uh, will the limited ships be on sale every day or just every few days? So um, every day there'll be a different manufacturer um, and then some of the ships will be sold in batches. So like if they sell the address, which they should, um, they'll be in like batches of 50 or 200 that will go on sale at certain periods and they will give us the times and dates for those. Um, we can't speak about specifics yet because they haven't released the schedule for it. Do you know if they're going to fix the sales terminals so we can buy armor, etc. at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo? You can at least buy, you're going to both buy it by hand, by interacting with the item at the very least. Can I upgrade my Taurus to a Caterpillar? Do all 
chips go on sale or available. Almost everything. What do you think the chances are that the RSA Black Widow will be announced at the Expo? So that's a good question, because I, I talked about that um, maybe a year ago? A, lot, a while ago. Um, I do think we'll see the Black Widow at some point. Uh, I haven't had any inklings of it going to be at this Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Typically, I would have had a rumor, or Star Citizen Nix would have said something, um, or someone would have said something, but... Um, Do you think we will get a cargo update big boxes in 2021? That's what it looks like they're moving to. iCash and Cargo 2.0. Well, thank you very much. More money. Get a haircut. Wow. Says the bald guy to the bald guy. Perfect. That's, that's fine. You're allowed to say that. Uh, love the show. Keep it up. Thank you very much. I'm going to have... I'm, I'm sorry... X-ray, so I'm going to take that $10 you gave me, and I'm going to have a curry tonight. I'm going to treat my family to a curry as well. Really fucking fancy a curry. Pardon my French again. I'm, going to, I'm trying not to swear so much on the live streams. I, I don't see much of a problem with swearing, but I have realised that some um, families <laughs> watch me, uh, and some uh, people watch me, watch me with their children, um, so I don't want to overly swear. Swearing is bad, kids. Well, I don't think it is. It's not polite to do regularly. Maybe just with your friends group. Or to emphasise a point. I like I like a good swear word. Um, but uh, it's not to do in polite conversation. Everyone's going to have a, a nice um, Halloween. Obviously Halloween for a lot of people this year is going to be a, a bit different. Because um, you're not going to be able to go out to the pub. You're not going to be able to... Um... Oh, th oh, that means children aren't going to come to my house and ask for sweets. Yes. That is the best thing that's happened this whole pandemic. I hate Halloween for people knocking on my door. I don't want kids to go around my house. I'm busy. I want to be playing computer games. What's your opinion on the newly unveiled resource management systems? Um, it's a evolution of the pipeline system um, that they originally wanted to ha have, um, which um, uh, sort of... Although they didn't talk about it directly in that inside Star Citizen properly, um, it directly is incorporated into the um, fiscalized component and fiscal damage systems. Um, but I really like the idea. But it, so it's going to allow for engineers to run around ships and repair these relays and basically these fuse boxes or the, the, these like um, conduits or whatever, the, the literal relay points. Uh, and I just think it's um, it's going to have so much gameplay. It's going to be so interesting and so fun. Um, Do you know if they're going to fix that? We talked about that. Uh, where are these new resource management systems? Uh, they're, they're, a while away, they're a while out. Um, I'd actually expect to see fiscalized components first start to be phased in, and then very soon afterwards, the new resource management system. It's possible they're coming both at the same time. Almost every ship should be available to purchase at some point during the expo, even if it's just in limited number. Uh, you once mentioned there was a civilian version and a military version of the Javelin. Sort of. So, the one that we humans have been able to buy is the civilian version. The military version of the Hornet is the one the UBE use, and it will have military components. Um, the civilian version uh, was supposed to be a stripped-down, empty version originally, but Cloud Imperium since said, your Javelin will be fully functional. Um, it just might not have the best... Components. Will people actually flog out thousands of dollars for one of these capital ships? Uh, yeah, people do all the time. I mean, people have spent, some people have spent tens of thousands of dollars. Um, I suspect there's probably someone or, or a few people that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. A hundred thousand dollars or more. Um, some people have huge disposable incomes and if gaming is your main or only hobby and you love Star Citizen, I think that people... Um, People spend hundred thousands on golf. Like you know, it's better than golf, isn't it? I mean, do they spend? Yeah, they do. They call it clear they do. Um, so I wouldn't recommend you spend thousands of dollars on ships. I, I'd recommend you spend thousands of dollars on your rig, so, so your PC. I, I'd say get it in game, right? Buy in game. Buy in game. Um.
Does Scam Citizen have VR? Not yet. Uh, but the no, new UIs looked like they were like being more VR ready. Uh, we'll know a bit more about VR when they've got Vulkan integration um, sort out for their game and their Gen 12 renderer, um, which we might see towards the end of the year. Um, it's going to be a while before VR's in. I've realised that my video that I talk about that in is coming out later today, but it's not yet. It's Chris Roberts behind me. Make sure I don't break NDAs. Oh, thanks, Jaybird, for, for being here to mod. Very much appreciated, sir. Endeavour, the forgotten child, question mark. So the Endeavour, big science ship, very modular. Going to be a while before um, Cloud Imperium get it in-game. Because it's complex and the science is a very, very complex in-depth mechanic which touches on a lot of stuff. Uh, have you tried the Kinubus for your anxiety? Uh, I can't, it's not legal in this country to be able to try, unfortunately, yet. Uh, maybe in the future I will. Um, uh, but I suspect that it would be probably pretty good for it. Um, so uh, I'd worry about the longer term medical, uh, potential medical problems with that, or the aging of parts of my body, because I don't, I don't want to slow down my brain. Um, that's one of the other things, like, I don't want to slow. I don't want to slow down. Uh, but I don't want to be tired all the time. So if I can relax a bit, that would be nice. Did the recent Corsair picture leak indicate anything? Uh, not to me. I mean, there's a cool new render that I saw. Uh, Cyberpunk Red comes out in November. Is that the uh, tabletop RPG version? Uh, new edition of the tabletop, yeah, because it's a uh, it's a few years. Was it thirty years before Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven or something? Would you be interested in playing a game of it? Yes, I would. Uh, I I I I want to do more 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 and more role play. Um, I might buy a a new lens from a camera. So I've got a um, I've got a Canon um seven fifty D um just here which. Uh, it's good for recording and good for taking pictures. Uh, and I'll be using it at lots of events, but I'll also be using it um, at some point when I can be able to set it up properly, potentially get a new lens um, for my uh, streams like this and for doing um, just vlogging to camera work because um, it's going to be significantly better than my uh, C922, um, my Logitech camera that's in front of me at the moment. Um, where was I going with that? I can't remember where I was going with that. But I'll get a new lens, and they'll be able to do um, other stuff and board games and uh, potentially D&D &D and stuff on the channel. I think it's the idea. Do you know what the ship of the next month is going to be? New. No. Hopefully the Mercury Star Runner. Uh, do you think they will add NPC critters on plants in the space? Yes, they've talked about it already. There's boids, which are like rats and ranter and the, the little floaty oni crabs. Uh, there's uh, space cows and animals. Uh, space cows going to be on the first major ones they get in. But they've also got like a, a yeti that's going to be on micro deck. There's the pyro crab and crablets, um, which are very big Cthulhu-esque demon-looking uh, crabs that live in pyro. Pyro 2, I think? Uh, and yes, big game hunting. Um, Science based on that, all that sort of stuff sounds like it's probable. J League concepted a suit of crab armor as well that you would get from harvesting them. Uh, the three pictures on the bottom of the saver date uh, for um, look like the Talon, the MSR, and the gunboat. What do you think they are? Um, that's, I don't agree. So I think, uh, I think in the center is the Nomad. And I think on the left and right is for the new RSI gunboat. Although, I mean, that, it, it could be the F8 as well. It's, oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, confuses my brain. It's hard to tell, isn't it? That's the, and it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a little sneaky picky. Uh, would you recommend the Mercury Star Runner or Drake Corsair for a group of three to five players? Depends on the type of gameplay you want. Yes, I'd recommend both of them. If you want to go more into exploration gameplay, Drake Corsair. Um, if you want to do uh, more um, uh, smuggly, data runny, 
um, and multi-role stuff than the Mercury Star Runner, maybe. Um, uh, I like both ships, but I think I prefer the, Mer the Mercury Star Runner. Um, I think that if you wanted to go uh, towards exploration, I'd actually go to the, to the um, Carrack rather than the Corsair. Oh, Facehead! Sorry for the multi message question, but it was kind of long. N no worries, I haven't seen it yet. I'll hopefully see it in a minute. Uh, what are some of your favourite board games? Endeavour, um, some of the Euro games. Uh, Endeavour's sort of like a uh, uh, engine building, colonisation ish. Well, it's not colonisation, shipping game uh, where you um, start in Europe um, and colonise the new world. And we'll ship out to the new world, explore it sort of thing. Uh, very basic mechanics. I, I absolutely uh, love and adore it. Um, I've just started playing Terraforming Mars, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, yeah, I like those sort of engine building games. Um, I'll pretty much play anything, though, board game-wise, that other people are playing. Um, with, uh, with, with at least two other people. So, like, cool, give me a board game. I play board game, I'm pretty easy. I'm reasonably good at board games as well. Uh, ones I like, I will, uh, I'll get good at pretty quick. Uh, we said the current focus is PvP. Uh, besides the obvious, what exactly does that mean? What? So, hmm, uh, that's not 100% true in all areas of the game. Um, there's a bit of a focus at balance for PvP. Um, that's why they, you saw the missile changes. Uh, and they want PvP to be in a competitive place as possible um, for uh, things like well, the general PU, um, so they can have counter missions, so they can get uh, theatres of war uh, working, and theatres of war. Um, uh, allows them to balance PvP much better in game, but it, I wouldn't say it's a. I mean, the, the core concepts of the game are, are, are more the focus. I like this NBC, and I've talked to the the uh, well, a tweeted the voice actor we've talked. Um, I like her more in the dress rather than the suit. Look, I said it. It was like six messages in chat. I don't know uh, the format uh, that you were taking questions. Yeah, yeah, so right. I'll, I'll see it in chat in a minute. Uh, let me go. Let me go find your question. Let me go find your question, Face said. Is it? Is it near? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I see these. I'll go back up to the top. So here's a thought-provoking question. I got the game and wanted nothing but the Redeemer. I felt this was the ship I could solo, play with friends, and do mercenary gameplay. It was a drop ship, had plenty of guns, uh, close combat air support, as well as having a living quarters. It was small enough to solo, boot, uh, no big enough to get uh, me in a bind. Now they've reworked the ship and I've lost the drop seats, as John Crew said. Uh, I'm at a point where I don't know if the ship is worth uh, it anymore since I've lost these drop seats. What are your thoughts on the rework and what is the ship you would recommend as a replacement? So, um, the Valkyrie is probably what directly replaces it, um, in my opinion. Uh, it might be worth seeing what you get from the Redeemer before you trade it up for something else. Um, you might also see um, use maybe in the Starlifter, uh, like the, the M2 Starlifter or something. Um, it depends on exactly what sort of gameplay you want. Um, but uh, I think the Valkyrie sort of almost directly replaces it. It's original intention, anyway. Warden or Miss? Ooh. Um, depends on the gameplay you want. Uh, missile boats might not be as effective as they were anymore. I would wait to see what they do with the missile rework early 2021. And then roughly work out what you think is uh, the gameplay you want. Uh, board, are you here, bruv? Y yeah, I'm here, bruv. You right, Jackov? Is the Star Runner still coming out at some point before the 3.12 patch? Yes. I expect it between now and the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo starting on the 20th of November. Your thoughts on when the Genesis Starliner will be in game? It's hard to tell. I don't know if it's a priority for Cloud Imperium. Um, they've got hints that it might be because they've got areas set up in the spaceports for Genesis Starliners. It makes sense that they'll 
want to use them to move players and NPCs um, and have gameplay associated with them, um, but have um, the, the ability to move players that don't want to move their ships to new areas, especially when you have like more fiscalized inventory stuff and um, the eye cash, you're, they're going to want to, well, your ships are here. Um, oh, I need to get here, though. My ships are there, and I haven't got any ships here. Well, you get on the Genesis Starliner and get travelled to there. You see what I mean? Uh, let's go back up here. Should we all make Pico heads as Disco did? Yes. Well, it wasn't Pico heads, was it? He made one Pico head, but he also made uh, Gillian Anderson and uh, Mark Hamill. I love... So, okay, let me actually show this. I'll, I'll tell you what Zin said. Uh... So, Disco had made a uh, Wilson's, so balls um, uh, out of football. We made a Pico head, which is fucking fantastic. We also had Mark Hamill just written on a ball. And what I said, that's got to be Gillian Anderson. And if that's Mark Hamill, right. And Zinn said, that can't be Gillian Anderson. Because she's... This, this ball's got curly hair. I was like, was well, Mark Hamill perfectly spherical? Is he? Um, so, with Mark Hamill written on his face. Uh, so I think that's Gillian Anderson. That's, that's the context there. Who's Gillian Anderson? Scully from X-Files? You think it's Brian Chambers? Oh, of course it's Brian Chambers. It could be Brian Chambers. It needs the... Is it the beard? Is this supposed to be Brian Chambers' beard? I thought it was Julie Anderson's beard. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, that makes more sense. Do you know what? Do you know what? That makes more sense. It's hard to tell, though. It's hard to tell. <laughs> uh... So this is how, this is how incorrect information gets out. Uh, when do you think they will fix the map where you can lock points to the quantum travel? I don't know exactly what you mean. They're working on a new star map. Well, an updated star map. Um, and they have, as you can see with the, the, the uh, compass they're putting in, they're actually thinking much more about um, coordinates, locations, uh, and we know eventually we're going to be able to um, save locations and stuff like that and travel to them. In some way. Uh, will the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo include a free fly event? I believe it will have a free fly event throughout the entire expo for anyone that has a Star Citizen account. You don't need to buy, have bought anything. You just need to make an account on their website and then put in the code that they say, put in this code to get, get access to the expo. Um, Any news on the Drake Corsair? Nope, no updates. Will limited uh, ship sales, for example, the Hull E be on sale? I believe so. Uh, some of those ships will have a, limit, a limited Hull amount, though. They'll be on sale. Uh, so, typically the ships in the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo have a number of months or years of insurance based on how many years Star Citizen's been going. So you expect to see between 72 to um, 10 years to lifetime insurance on ships. Uh, ships are over $1,000, I think, automatically have lifetime insurance. Uh, ships and ship packages with new ships in have lifetime insurance. <coughs> <coughs> uh, is the Endeavour typically sold for limited quantities? Uh, I can't remember. I think it's... I don't think it's in limited quantity, the Endeavour. I'm hearing folks in-game talking about how the Mercury Star, uh, Mercury Star Runner's pilot-controlled hardpoints increased in size. Do you know if this is true? It looks like it has. We don't know exactly until it's in our hands or until CIG tell us. Right, has there been any talk about planetary nav on foot? Yes, there's been talk about it, but there's no like extra confirmation or anything more than they're looking at it. There's going to be some ways of navigating. 
kind of some form of coordinates or you know, navigation system that I'm about to share. Any idea how they will handle trophies like concierge guns and special helmets? I don't know. I suspect you're about to ensure them. Any learner ships changed occasionally, Corsair News? Uh, you can check uh, on support.orbspaceindustries.com to see what the, the current loaner ship matrix is. Uh, Corsair News, no new Corsair News currently. Do you have any idea to when core technologies will come online to the point where more gameplay mechanics can come in? Every single patch. Every single patch, you're going to see more and more core com uh, uh, gameplay and mechanics come online. Uh, it's, it's a slow process, though. Was Squadron 42 delayed uh, partly due to the lawsuit? It could have been. Um, I don't think there was any major delay there, but I don't know for sure. Uh, I think generally Star Citizen is just... They're trying to take as long as they want to get it, it into a really good state. I, I, there's no publisher, so you've got the, the problem of them um, taking as long as they need, as long as they want. That might produce a great game. Um, I'll be interested to see if they still have this big crunch phase or they don't. A lot gets done in crunch, and I'm not sure if Star Citizen Squadron, well, Squadron 42 has had a crunch phase. You could argue that Star Citizen has at least one, uh, well, crunch phases for every major patch, uh, but I suppose the uh, only real crunch phase we know about, uh, I see, is for CitizenCon, and obviously they didn't have that this year, so... Uh, will the Rangers be back on sale with lifetime insurance? Probably not, um, but you might be able to get them in a package with other ships with lifetime insurance. Uh, what's the status of the Crusader Ares Ion? Still in development. Um, I suspect that the pipeline's pretty refined for it, and I would expect to see it sort of like um, Q2, Q3 next year. My expectation. Uh, at full release, will Star Citizen have better graphics? Yes. It'll have better graphics, it'll have um, a lot more graphics options, and uh, scalability. How many fuel tanks are we up to? What? Uh, when we finally get item 2.0, can we separate wing controls from landing gear? Uh, they've been working on that, and that is the plan, I believe. Uh, I don't think it's uh, directly related to item 2.0, though. Or the expansion of physicalized components, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Look at all these people spending so much money on Star Season! You're mad! In the best possible way. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. Good on you. You know, if you're spending it on something you love. Uh, what do we think will be the to uh, LTI token at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo? Uh, the Nomad. Probably going to be the token. Um, if, it, if it is indeed on sale, which will be the... Uh, we're expe oh, I'm expecting to be the mobile refinery ship. And I expect that to be priced around a $90. Maybe we'll get something really, really cheap and small, like a little tiny vehicle. A vehiclette. Uh, bear with me one second. Uh, I am going to buy out... Oh, it's going to be an old... It's slightly older.
Hi. Hope you enjoyed my chat. Ooh. Uh, did you get your vandal mask? I don't think I did. I've only got today to get it. Oh, I don't know if I want it. Probably got like maybe 20. <laughs> I've really been actively going for people. I can't be bothered. I... I've been busy. Uh, what is your guess as the ships in three pictures? We talked about that. 3.12 gameplay question mark uh, soon. What, what? Ah, you monsters with your ships. Some more questions that we've already answered. Some more questions we've already answered. <clears throat> uh, what are your thoughts on 2020 content wise? Uh, very slow year. Um, obviously partly um, understandable with uh, lockdown. Um, but uh, still, obviously, st stuff and strides they're making. Um, Better Merchantman or C2? W which is for whom? Um, Better Merchantman, if you want to do trading and hauling. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the Better Merchantman is more of a trade ship. Uh, and I suspect it would be better um, if you've got to go through more dangerous areas. Whereas the C2, um, I would expect it to be better for um, if you want to transport vehicles uh, or, or do um, work a lot in atmosphere, then I might want to go for the C2 over the Bannon Merchantman. That's the way I I think of it in my head. How about cloth outfits over the undersuit? Uh, I think it's I think you'll be able to put accessories onto armor, but I don't think you'll be able to have Cloth armor under a, a suit, and then it show with your armor on. I think your light suit goes on top of that for a reason. Um, that might change. Uh, what do you think about the new HUD? I I absolutely love it. I think it looks great. We talked about it earlier. Um, at a glance, it has all the information I want. I don't think it's too cluttered. At least it's not cluttered in the area that I need to be able to see and fight in. Uh, and I can get all the information I want. I can also now see uh, notifications. Um, and I can see a compass. And I can see my, um, my my signature and how it compares to the background or the environment. And uh, there's just a huge amount of data uh, available for me there. Bam, bam, bam. Thank you very much for the donation as well, Arthur. Uh, Carl Lockhart. You just answered my question about NPCs flying uh, us around the universe. Are they planning to do more with restricted areas? I hate flying out of Area 18 now. Uh, also have some cash. Thank you very much for the cash. Appreciate it. Uh, yes, they're going to continue to change and improve the restricted areas. Exactly how that's going to evolve, I don't know yet. Uh, we do know that they want to um, um, further relax green zones and have FPS combat, have NPC spawn lockers so NPCs can come and reinforce areas, NPC security forces on the ground, um, that, that sort of stuff. Uh, so I suspect that will be built into that. They're going to massively incentivize players to um, not attack each other and not do weird things around landing zones, especially safe uh, in the safer areas um, with, the, with the law system, with the security system. Um, with risk and reward and stuff like that, but there's going to be a huge amount of risk for no, almost no reward um, uh, at those areas. Pro probably none. Um, uh, so, uh, but they, they sort of also want to remove these hard systems out that go, you can't fire your guns, and oh, this you can't fly wherever you want. It's interesting with the restricted areas because they are a bit overly buggy. And not working as intended, or at least originally. They're a lot better than they were now. Uh, but they're still not great. I want to have a bit more freedom to move around. Um, so, let, let's see what they do with them. They're, they're, they're going to involve and improve them, for sure. Uh, do you think the RSI Constellation will go through yet another... Uh, um, I think it would get a very light rework. Um, n nothing, nothing major. Just sort of like materials updates, lighting updates, lighting pass, a um, little, few little tweaks. N n nothing, nothing major. And mainly just because they're going to be adding the functionality of the, um, the docking of the P seventy two and P fifty two. Uh, 
how detailed do you think the medical gameplay would be? Uh, so, I, I think there's going to be lots of different levels of medical gameplay. There's going to be just using items on yourself to cure things or to cure other people. Um, they built a med gun, for example. There's going to be uh, people getting knocked down and bleeding out rather than just insta-dying. Uh, and you're going to be able to stabilize them. You're going to be able to use medical items on them. You're going to be able to get them back to safety. Uh, a lot of the stuff will happen is that you'll be able to get people up even if they're very badly injured. Um, temporarily. Or be able to help them get up or use a med pen on them to give you temporary, I need to get to a clinic. I need to get to a med bed. Uh, and you might be able to stabilize them for a much longer period on a med bed. Um, but there's, there's sort of like these different tiers of medical game uh, of, of, of med bed and, and facility. Um, field, I suppose one of them is field repairs and work where you can just jab yourself with a pen, use a med gun, stabilize someone out on the field um, just with random items on you or medical items on you um, and drag people around. Uh, but there's also going to be um, tier three injuries, which are uh, minor injuries, but could be a, a, a whole crippled limb. Um, which require um, treatment or, or curing disease and stuff like that. Um, tier two injuries, which are going to be multiple crippled limbs, um, major major damage, uh, and then um, tier one injuries, which is near death injuries, um, which are all going to need sort of like um, to, to have treated in a hospital or on a med bed or um, in a medical ship. Um, exactly how in depth that gameplay is, we do not know yet. Will there be lots of mini games associated with it? Will it just be using the right items on the right thing and just having a quick diagnosis and working out what to do? Can you accidentally kill someone by splinting their leg uh, rather than putting an eye patch on them? Unlikely, but uh, possible, I suppose. Uh, so, what's, why have you, if you sent me lots more money, DJ Brown, money, avoid buying MDM. Uh, but get something good. I will not buy the narco nar narcotics. I mean, I like I like a bit of a drink. <laughs> so, I mean, I like some drug. No, I I like uh, I like wine, and I like my cider, uh, and I, I drink a lot less than I used to. Um, I did drink like half a bottle of Gentleman Jack the other week, which I regretted the next day. I used to be able to drink a lot more. I feel less effects. But thanks. I will. I, I will enjoy that. Thank you very much, TJ Brown. Very much appreciate it. Um, I'm a pretty good boy now. Uh, I enjoy my food. And I enjoy a nice wine. Uh, but how detailed would I like to see medical gameplay? I can't believe you sent me that much money, you monster, TJ Brown. Thank you so much. Um... I'm not sure how detailed I want medical gameplay to be. Um, I want there to be nuance to it. I want there to be a lot going on with it. Um, but not too much that it overly complicates everything. Like, I want it not to get in the way of the game. I want it to add to gameplay. Um, but uh, sort of CIG have said that, yeah, you better get medipens and, and potentially um, items and, and gear and uh, help people up off the floor and uh, get them com briefly combat ready or get them be able to get back on their feet so they can then get to a clinic. So, like, give them temporary health. Um, I like that idea. Um, I think that's a good idea. I apologize. Are you actually dog bark? Sorry, DJ Brown. You mind me to yawn. Uh, what else have we got? Uh... When we get the Tonk in game. So we know that they've had a little bit more of a prioritization of the Tonk because they wanted to get it in Theatres of War. Um, I would expect to see it next year. I'm not sure when next year, though. Um, it's going to be based on their priorities. Uh, what are your thoughts on the prototype engineering role? We need to see more on it. Um, I love the idea of engineers running around, um, putting out fires, uh, repairing systems, repairing relays, um, people at co consoles. Um, rerouting power, turning off relays. Uh, uh, great, great, genuinely great gameplay for, uh, for, for Mortar Crew. And for boarding and, uh, and uh, ship, ship attrition for capital ships. Because that's what's going to happen. Like, capital ship fights are going to be pretty, um, hopefully pretty lengthy. Um, and um, it'll be big battles of attrition sometimes. And I also hope that a lot of the time these ships are going to be trying to get away. 
Um, so then you have reasons to have quantum interdiction and, and that sort of stuff. And you win a fight, not necessarily by destroying all the ships in the area, but by driving them all away. So there needs to be gameplay associated with, with that that makes it satisfying to have won, but not necessarily murdered everyone. Do you think it's possible that CIG seals, uh, sells the F7A during the Anvil Day? It's possible. I think it's more likely it will be flyable to test than it to be on sale. Do you think the they will put uh, in full drive VR technology uh, when it's released? We're not going to get full out of VR. We're not going to get Sword Art Online. Not for many years. Well, we might have some pretty, pretty strong uh, VR tech in the next 20 years, admittedly. Uh, what's your expectations for how physicalized inventory on ship components will work with insurance? You'll be able to insure your ship with its full loadout. But it will cost more. I think that, I think your ship's components are going to be worth a lot more than the hull of your ship if you go for the top grade military A uh, equipment. I don't have a question about Star Citizen, but I'll ask how you are. I'm doing pretty well. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, really looking forward to the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Looking forward to 3.11.1 uh, going to first wave PTU. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, 3.12. Uh, looking forward to Zin being fully better. Um, next week's going to be good. I think it should be in a position that we can start to do a lot more of the stuff that I wanted to do. Um, D&D &D again next week. Yeah, I'm doing well. My dad's doing very well as well. Thank you very much for asking. I think the Polaris will go on sale. Yes. Uh, do you think the Tally will get a rework? I think it will get some light. I think it will get a bit of a light update, but nothing, nothing major. Um. Ship docking still coming to 3.12. No. Well... Um, so it's not on the roadmap, 3.12. Um, you might get hard dock in 3.12. So that would be the Constellation P52, P72, docking and undocking. I mean, it's possible you'd get shipped to station docking. They're working on it, and we've seen it, but I, it's not going to be ready for then. Uh, I casually watch your videos at 1.25 speed. Can you do a favour and speak 25% faster? No. I think people would say that I speak too fast anyway. Jeez. Will armoured clothing be a thing? Like a bulletproof vest. Uh, maybe, actually. Clo I, I would expect to see damage um, mitigation on some clothing. So, yes. Uh... CCU to the Polaris. So, if it is a limited by number hull, yeah, so like the 890 jump, for, for example, I don't think they do CCUs for it. So bear that in mind. With them showcasing engineering gameplay, what's your estimate for repair work and uh, the Crucible and Vulcan? So, uh, the Vulcan's um, salvage, but... Uh, the Crucible is obviously um, mid to high tier repair. Uh, so expect to see physicalized components, removing components, and putting a component back in as tier zero repair. Potentially with relays at the same time. Having you to make sure a relay is working and moving stuff around. Yeah? Uh, but the actual repairing of um, hull damage, large ship components... Um, uh, and that sort of stuff, I think, will come a lot later. What is your opinion on the sightings of the demented physics god, uh, Clang, from Space Engineers, showing his head in the physics star system? Well, eventually we'll have a big iron that will iron everything out, and everyone will be happy. That's mine. Uh, Invictus, so didn't they say... Uh, Invictus Cell, they didn't do the CCU to Polaris. Okay. We'll see, we'll see if they have it this year. But 
as I said, typically more with uh, limited hulls. And when it's limited by number, they don't. And when the ship is over a certain amount of money, over a thousand dollars, I think. I'm gonna get clip you saying Julian Anderson's beard. No worries, you can <laughs> tweet her with it. Uh, how likely will we be seeing the next iteration or first iteration of Salvage next year? Almost certainly. So, and I expect the first iteration of Salvage will literally just be removing components um, by hand or with the cutting tool and bringing them back to your ship. That is first. That is tier zero Salvage. Uh, Mercury Star Rail before Invictus. Yes, before Invictus. Invictus is the Fleet Week. Um, Mercury Star Runner should be coming out between now and November 20th. Which is uh, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Which I know you meant Invictus, but you know, you know what I mean. I was being uh, semi pedantic. Accurate. I was being accurate. Uh, yeah, it, it it looks more likely now that the Mercury Star Runner will come out at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo on, on the first day, potentially. Um, but I think it's still possible we could get it um, with a 3.11.1 patch that comes out a little bit before that with the external bits of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Because that, that's what they do every year. They have the, the new location there, but you just can't enter. Since new concepts are required for funding, do you think, nah, eh, it's not anymore. That's not true. Them selling ships is required. Um, but they're not necessarily new concepts. Uh, and they're obviously also selling strict flyable ships, but new ships, I see what you mean. But they need to sell ships. It doesn't necessarily mean new ships. I mean, they could stop selling, new, stop making new ships and just sell the old ships and they'd still be making a lot of money. Do you think CIG will at some point be able to catch up on all the unfinished concepts? Um, yeah, they, they are. There's not that many ships left to actually for them to produce. Is the Banu Merchantman out of active development for now? It is not currently in active development, the Banu Merchantman, as far as we are aware. Uh, I want to do Cyberpunk on my channel. I'll probably do a playthrough of me and a playthrough of Zin uh, on Cyberpunk. Uh, I need to make sure that there's no ding-dongs. Um, and and bubble all the lees, um, shame. So the plus will be on sale, or store current store credit guaranteed. I I can't guarantee that. I, I think it's likely. I think it's highly likely. Do you think there'll ever be a game mode where everyone starts the same and can't use ships paid for by real money? Uh, there's going to be mods and stuff in Star Citizen. You want Battle Royale is what you want. Uh, why do you think the Polaris won't be available as CCU? Someone said that it wasn't last year. Uh, and I said, typically ships that are limited number won't go on CCU. And it depends on how they sell the Polaris this year. Oh, so yeah, yeah they, 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 the Polaris has previously had CCU upgrades, yes. Um, but I say, I can't guarantee that there's a CCU up for, uh, this year. I don't know exactly how they're going to select. Um, yeah, I suppose they, they, don't limit, they don't limit the amount of Polaris by hull. Limited by time rather than by hull, so yeah, it should be a CCU available. Did all the 100 series CIG giveaways have lifetime insurance? I think they did. I have not given away. So CIG did give me a compliment of uh, a 100i, 125a, and a 135c to give away, uh, which I have yet to do. I uh, will be giving them away next month. Um, on so I'll, I'll talk with Zin um, on the weekend and we'll work out how, how we're giving those away. Eagerly waiting for the Star Runner giveaway. Uh, we'll draw it on the weekend, probably. Do we know, roughly know when we're going to see the Hull series? No, not really. Uh, they're working on getting the Hull scene game uh, with various 
um, sort of mechanics and stuff that they've been building for that for a while. Uh, I'm excited to see potentially us being maybe being able to fly the F8 and the F7A um, during Fleet Week. It'd be great if we can. They don't have to be on sale. It'd be cool if we can just fly them. Do you know what I mean? When do you think the Orion will not... When do you think the Orion will not be out until we have two systems at least? So the big big old miner. Um, yeah, I think it, we're likely to see a few more star systems before the Orion comes out. The Orion's a massive mining ship. It's just massive. Um, I don't think they need it in-game. Unless it's less for Squadron 42's needs. And even if they do need it for Squadron 42, I wouldn't necessarily expect it to be ready for the Persistent Universe. And in Merchantman when? Uh, if you're lucky, end of next year. Um, I think it's more likely we'll see Polaris by the end of next year. And um, yeah, 2022. I, I, I think more likely 2022. Do you reckon the RSI gun boat will be a limited hull sail? Don't know. It's hard to tell. Um, I think... N limited time, not limited hull. That would be my expectation. That they'll... It will be an expensive, big ticket ship for them. A lot of sales, especially if they don't limit it. What ships will probably not be available during the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo? To purchase um, Sabre Raven, um, AMD Mustang Omega. Scythe. Maybe Scythe and Dave. Dave. Probably everything else, including probably a limited amount of javelins and Idris. Uh, probably not the F8 and the F7A <laughs> as well. Uh, hey, Bo, do you have any thoughts about the, res the that resource flow graph on the Halloween episode? How close is that kind of function that we're going to see into ships? Uh, they're working on it. They've been building ships and systems with it in mind however i don't think we'll see it until the end of next year at the earliest have you heard anything about the new aaron halo still in development it's a point of interest that they were building and prototyping um about six months ago there was lots of work going on to it i'm not sure where it currently sits however i know they've been working on points of interest and gas cloud tech um so obviously for 3.12 you're going to see a uh, new gas clouds and nebula and stuff like that that um space stations and points of interest are going to uh, in and you'll see a lot of this throughout the Santa system um, and I think that the natural evolution of that is to see the Iron Halo um, at some point next year. Hully flyable by one person? Yes, but it's a big ship and there's a lot that go wrong with it and it might be hell to fly with one person. Um, so bear that in mind. Why would CIG use Gunboat as a name, or Gunship? Uh, that would seem to go against all of their previous uh, n uh, name uh, uh, scheme. Um, so, I think it's just a... It will, it, so, Star Citizen Leaks originally said that the RSI Gunboat, or Gunship, was going to be um, the Odin, which they may have renamed, it might have just been the working title. So, uh, I think, like, originally, the Banu Defender was going to be called the Minuteman. Um, little, little known fact. Um, but they changed it. Uh, so... Stuff like that changes. Uh, but I think the, it calling it gunship slash gunboat at the moment is just a working title. And they'll reveal it probably um, during when it goes on sale in Fleet Week. If it goes on sale, which I think it is. Uh, do you think we will see some of the joke ships once they get further down the line? What? 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 What do you mean? Big ships. Updated Vandal skins when? I don't know. It's not just skins. I mean, it's the model as well. I mean, they look amazing, the new ones. Uh, I'm not sure when they're going to put them in the game. Hopefully soon. I mean, uh, I suppose their cockpits are markedly different from the Squadron 42 cockpits ones, but... You think we'll ever see the Retribution flying? Yes, but I don't think it will be in Squadron 42 Episode 1. I think that will be being built in episode one and turn up in episode two. 
I think they may have been influenced slightly by Free Space 2. Um, you, you, Kragiri on, you, you, Kragiri on, thank you very much for the sub. <laughs> I don't know how to say your name. <laughs> thank you though, very much appreciated. Um, right. Is VR still, uh, is VR support still a thing? You can, so, VR is, you can bodge it to work with Vorpix and, and other things like that, yeah? At the moment. There's no official VR support for Star Citizen or Squadron 42 currently. Um, they said they had planned to put it in game at some point, and we'll look at it more realistically after they've got their Gen 12 renderer slash Falcon support in. They're actually about to go, let's think about it. Um, will it 100% be in game? Well, not 100%. Um, cer certainly not 100%. Um, is it very likely? Yes. When? In the far future. Um, it's going to be a while. And expect to see it in Squadron 42 first if they do put it in. Um, that, that would be a lot sooner than um, getting it in for the Persistent Universe, in, in my opinion. At what time is Calling All Devs today? Don't know. Um, probably around 8pm-ish UK time. Do you think we will get a carbon or white version of the mole? Uh, so, yeah, you'll be able to paint and have lots of different skins for your for loads of different ships in the future. There'll be loads of aftermarket um, stuff for that. Um, well, get aftermarket customization in the not too distant future, um, mid mid term, I suppose is what I'm, I'm talking about there. Uh, lots of cool stuff coming up with the Interstellar Aerospace Expo and the ship showdown. Um, skins and flair. So. Food truck and ships in game would be great for in game events. Maybe. I mean, if you can have a shop on a banner merchantman, why not have a very mini shop ship? And then you can set it up as a food van. You can set it up whatever you want. Have a single, um, a single shop module in a ship. That's the ship. But whatever you want in there. Put a clothing store in there. Put a food store in there. Whatever. Sort of makes sense. I love you, Huntress. Board, is to uh, board totally ignored his mods questions. What? What questions do I ignore? Maybe. When do you think we'll get a board, board egg in the PU? Is that a real question? Uh, and yes, I did. I did ignore it. Uh, thank you very much, Huntress, for the love and turning up. I haven't seen you for a while. Mwah! You are one of my favourite people. I was going to say, were one of my favourite people? That's a lie. You are one of my favourite people. And I miss you. Don't give me one questions. I don't fucking know, do I? I uh, have a good go as well. I have an a um, have a, a fa I I reckon it's around then. Uh, we need to um, we need to do some playing or chatting or something together, Huntress, with me, you and Zin, and and potentially some other people. Um, get some more play on the go or something. Uh, it'd be good to uh, pick your brain on things. Um, I like to get you more involved in the channel and you use your brilliant ideas. Uh, how many hours average per month do you play Star Citizen? I don't know. Um, not, probably not as many as people think. Between 20 and, 20 and 40? Um, I don't play that much. Uh, I play a reasonable amount. Uh, during new patch cycles, I play a lot. Hundreds? Maybe? Is there any part of the Microtech Expo outside this year? We don't know. We don't have all the details yet. I'm hoping there's uh, an event uh, external to it. Can we have our group logo on bigger ships? Don't know yet for sure. Uh, I would hope that would, that would be customization that you can do. You'd be doing me a favor, Huntress, to be honest. And you say yes, please, but you'd be doing me a favor. And, and, and I think you realize as well that you would be. <laughs> so thank you. Um, Right. 
Do you think the Consolidated Land Pioneer is worth its cost? So it's going to be changed a significant amount. So they basically said with base building and the Pioneer that the Pioneer is now going to be more of a mobile factory. You don't need the Pioneer to be able to build a base, but it's going to allow you to build a bigger base, um, more reliable base quicker, maybe more efficiently, maybe cheaper, uh, all that sort of stuff. So um, I think that if you're into base building, want to build a big base, you're most certainly going to need a Pioneer or, or a good base, or based on well. Um, but it's expanded out a lot more. It's not just an outpost dropper now. Uh, but exactly what it's going to do, we don't know yet. Because we have not seen all the mechanics for this. And the, the CIGs have not told us about it all. Uh, organization member does piracy. Can everyone get a... Can everyone get member? What? So, if you have... Expect to see an org reputation as well as an individual reputation for people. Um, and your org will be partly affected by the members in it. Will the Rangers' bikes be back on sale? Yes, almost certainly. Uh, Player-owned asteroid bases, you'll be able to build bases on lots of different areas. Uh, how big's the asteroid? Is it Delamar big? You'll almost certainly be able to build uh, on places like that. Smaller asteroids, I don't know. Um, potentially asteroid bases. Obviously, one of the hangars is an asteroid base hangar. What, why is, why am I wearing a skull cap? This is my head. Unless you, that's, I love you, Chris. Um, <laughs> got an itchy face. Since they showed off layer three with the sandworm demo, I love the fact that you referred to it as the sandworm demo rather than um, sort of like factory tech V2 demo or anything like that. Uh, do you think they have any other planets or systems built out just without gameplay and hero houses? Uh, they certainly have other biomes and um, uh, stuff prototyped and teched out. Like they, they've built out the solar system very roughly originally um, so they get like a size comparison and work out scale and things like that. Um, they've, got, they've probably got the Odin system. They've probably got some of the Nyx system. Uh, they've probably got a reasonable amount of the Pyro system. Um, and other test planets, other biomes and stuff that we haven't seen yet. Almost certainly. Do you think there'll be a race for guilds to claim Benny Henge? Guilds are separate from organizations. I think the guilds are more um, functional NPC orgs that give you benefits for being part of. Um, but for orgs, uh, will you be able to claim Benny Henge? Probably not. Probably won't be able to land claim something like that probably has to be on the surface of a moon or a planet. Could you set up a blockade around it? Probably. When, if, why, guild system mission givers? I don't know what the, that means. I think you don't know what that means either. I hate you, Windlord. Uh. Surrender of mines, yeah. You can have the mines, that explode, ex the magnetic mines, and the pew pew turret mi uh, mines. I'm actually looking forward to um, base defense, uh, and uh, I hope that they have uh, player in stations in the future. I think that would be pretty awesome. Plastic Death, thank you very much for your money, because I like money. Happy Friday, pal! Can you please explain resources like mining nodes? Will they respawn, or are they finite? Seems a bit unfair if you join a game late and starter areas have been stripped. Okay. So expect... Finite amount of resources which change over time and new areas to be discovered regularly. So what I would basically expect is that you'll find uh, an area on a planet and there's a finite amount of resources there, mine there for a while, and then that will get exhausted. And then later on, kind of, in another area, more resources might spot. Yeah, that's what I'm sort of expecting. And they can be depleted over time and, uh, and get less and less and less. That's sort of the way I'm expecting it to go. Um, I, they've sort of like said it will be finite, but there's obviously they need to drive the economy. There's obviously going to be ways you can just keep on finding asteroid fields in space because they can move them around and, and they can have them spawn. Uh, I would expect to see similar on planets, to be honest. Um, 
The thing is, is that we do not know exactly how CIG are going to apply it in practice. You might have heard Tony Zerovic talk about finite resources, but I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that. It might mean finite temporarily in an area until others are discovered and they move around. Because um, there's a huge amount of gameplay area as well, so... That's my expectation for that. Um, Hi, board. I'm currently in non-AVX purgatory. So um, what uh, this gentleman is saying here is that um, his CPU does not have AVX instructions, so he can't launch Star Citizen. Uh, it's a recent change to Star Citizen that requires AVX instructions, which some people, a very small amount, just can't play anymore, um, which is a little bit annoying, uh, admittedly. So I, I, I have sympathy for you. Have they? Ooh. Ooh. Have they finalised the mechanics for people who have multiple game packages in one account? I presume it's evolved. Uh, no, so they have not finalised, and at least they haven't conveyed um, multiple game packages and what that does. Could it give you multiple character slots? Could it allow you to have multiple NPCs as those characters? Um, they have said that agent smithing is still planned, which is great because I thought it wasn't planned anymore. And that would be um, having NPCs on your ship and then allowing certain friends to take control of those NPCs when they log in, which would be cool. You, they, I, I, that's awesome. Um, Chris Roberts is by me yet? You love him, yeah? He's cool. He's not decapitated, that's just Chris Roberts. Have you seen anything more than his head and shoulders, eh? No, you haven't. No one has. Have you tried Escape from Tarkov? Um, yes, ages ago. I, I'll check it out again. I, I think it's too stressful for me. Um, I don't do well... Do well with too much stress. <laughs> um, will the space whale be available during the next expert center? Uh, so I'm expecting the next Intergalactic Aerospace Expo to be on Orison Crusader. And that's an interesting thing. I don't think the space whales will be ready, but I think they'll have maybe space whale plushies and space whale statues and, and that sort of stuff. They, they are building a space whale for Crusader. When will the scopes on weapons actually work, zooming in and out? Uh, they are working on it. Um, uh, so they are working on weapon zeroing for 3.12, so I'd expect a, a bit of a scope um, uh, bug fix at the same time. Right. In the 600i rework, it's, uh, yeah, uh, should it have received a medical bay? I don't believe so. This one is not supposed to have a medical bay, is it? Where is it? I can't fucking remember. Did you pick up the D and D cookbook, Heroes Feast? No, but I probably will uh, now because that sounds awesome. Uh, Official D&D cookbook, Heroes Feast. Perfect. Was that coming out November 3rd? Not out already? Oh, that looks amazing. Okay. Trout mushrooms, elven cuisine. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be getting that. Thanks. Uh... Right, any other questions quick before I uh, sort of move this on to someone else's channel? I'd, I'd go and host someone else. Because I am going to I want to go check on my uh, parents and my cats and probably get a little bit of nosh. That's food. I don't know. You can make me yawn. Just by saying yawn because I will read it and then I will yawn. Uh, when will uh, we talked about that? Uh, am I the only one with mixed feelings about fiscalized inventories? Don't know how I feel about having to store duplicates everywhere or fly um, to retrieve them. So I think the idea is that you have items that you want with you and in different locations. You don't necessarily keep, need to keep on moving around to go and get your previous items. You take them with you. You take them as storage. Or you, or you, yeah, you have duplicates in different places. Um, 
the, the issue you have potentially then is that you've got too many ships and too many things. Um, did they ever fix the 140 million player render issue? What? 140 oh, meter player issues. Uh, they are. Hmm. Expect a load of stuff to be fixed in 3.12. Um, when it comes to some of the networking stuff, they, they, but I'm not sure exactly what. Fillet or ribeye? Uh, ribeye. Ribeye are my favourites. I mean, you can get a good fillet for sure, but uh, the ribeye is so flavourful and oh, I love it. I love a big, thick ribeye. Uh, will the Buccaneer be able, be on sale soon during the expo? Uh, yeah, it will be on sale during the expo. Uh, what do you think about bigger ground vehicles that you can live in? I, I think it's a good idea. And I think we will see some larger um, uh, vehicles to the ground. Should I download? Should I download on? Oh, should I get Star Citizen on an Alien uh, 17 uh, R4 at uh, 1080? Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Star Citizen will work pretty well on that machine. Uh, will the Buccaneer be? We talked about that. <laughs> you want to? You want to buy a rolling camper? <laughs> Going to Vega or something. I sort of look. I love the idea of bases on planets. Um, I kind of like the idea of of having large mobile bases uh, for for, gra for planets. Maybe not large ones, but vehicles that you can yeah log out in. Um, you can do surveying in. Do a lot of gameplay mechanics that mirror some of the um what, what ships can do. It sort of makes sense. Uh, I have a uh, I have an upgrade on my package, the UE exploration pack. Lifetime insurance and wanted to remove it. If I melt it, will I be able to reacquire it uh, in the buyback tab? I don't think you can reacquire that scale of package. You'll have to. You will. You might be able to if you talk to support. Talk to support and see. Will they ever put the Kraken back at Lawville? Um. Hmm. Yes. Once the Kraken's in game properly. So the, the, the Kraken that you saw at Lawville uh, previously was just the um, exoskeleton model for it is the, the way I describe it. Early, early, early stuff. My Vegeta Titan has been stuck on the insurance loop for a month. Any idea when they're fixing that? No. Um, I would expect it to, it to be fixed for 3.11.1 though. Um, you can't, I think you can reset your account to fix that, but though that is quite an extreme step. Too. Um Right. Oh, I'm really happy that Huntress came and said hello. I love you, Huntress. You are one of my favourite people. Um, and I will give you a poke later on today. That's a promise. It's a full game up! Right, I say promise. I mean, uh, it depends if I remember after I've eaten. <laughs> I'm the worst. But um, Zin is doing much better. Um, she's like alive today and wanted to work, so uh, she should have a video finished uh, for uh, me when this stream is done, and I'll put that up within the next couple of hours. Uh, that will be a video looking at the uh, summary of Inside Star Citizen, but also a little bit on the Interstellar Aerospace Expo and uh, some more of the teasers. Um, we're gonna go host someone else in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Very much appreciated. Thank you very much to Hundreds just for being alive and being uh, a mod. I uh, thank you very much, Plastic Death. Um, for for the, for the for the monies, uh, and DJ Brown for the lots of monies and saying that I'm not allowed to buy narcotics with it. That's that's fine. Uh, Carl Lockhart, thank you so much. Uh, Arthur Sagazian, Sagai Sag Sagazian, um, Facehead, you star X Racer, Mwah. Sweets Karma, mwah, mwah, mwah. Death Road. Oh, that's a load of money. Why? I don't do anything with my life. Astro Mappers, thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy Halloween indeed. I hope everyone has a great Halloween weekend. Um, I'm looking forward to being able to avoid uh, trick or treaters this year, which is great because um, if they're outside my house, then they're probably breaking some of more lockdown rule and I'll report them to the police. Get wrecked, kids. Um, but thank you, yeah, uh, very much appreciated. Um, yeah, I ain't really got as much to say. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we will go and host someone else. Wait, no, no, that's me talking to me. Uh, we've got my, we've got Moose, we got Moose, we're going to go host Moist Noodle. I love him. 
Uh, Brady Moist Noodle. Thanks very much for watching. I love you all. If you want to get in touch with me, contact at boardgamer.co.uk, send me an email, uh, or you can go to my Discord, discord.gg forward slash boardgamer, and talk to me there. Um, I think we're probably going to be featuring soon Rogue Squadron, because um, I want to talk to them uh, about Sussex and PvP and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to be doing some videos with that. Uh, but also I'm going to be getting my, genuinely getting my org spotlight back on track, because um, I would like to do a couple of orgs a month. Um, and not just orgs, it'll be um, things like Game Glass or apps or, or whatever um, that I want to highlight uh, as a series a couple of times a month. I think it's a, a good idea to do. But yeah, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully we'll have 3.11.1 out in our hands relatively soon before um, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. It makes sense um, because they'd like to have the locations ready to go um, for... The actual day of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, which is on the 20th of November. Um, could we get the Mercury Star Runner with that 3.11.1 patch before uh, the 20th? It's possible. It's possible. So I'm, I'm hoping for that, but if not, then expect it on the 20th. Thank you very much for joining me today. I love your faces. You take care, guys. See you in the verse. And uh, I know, get NordVPN, maybe. Uh, uh, click the join button. Become a... Uh, send money. Please send money! Chris is, <laughs> Chris is looking at me.